Bobby Moncur on the left leading out Scotland and Bobby Moore leading out his English side. Well, the banners for the moment are pretty well hidden, but they'll be out again, I'm sure. The England side, Chris Lawler coming in at number two. It was a question of uh, Maidley or Lawler, and it's Lawler who's got the number two place. It was also a question of whether Francis Lee would have recovered from, fit from uh, an injury, and he's fit as well. The Scottish side, a much more adventurous looking side, a much better balanced looking side than lost at home to Northern Ireland in Hampden Park on uh, Tuesday night with a lot of experience there, particularly in defence, and a lot of inspiration as well. And the sheer inspiration, I suppose, they're looking for from Jimmy Johnston. Now Moore. Oh, Cormac. There's more delayed. Cormac again wasn't giving him time. That's a cross going under Banks' crossbar. Gathered as safely as ever, though, by Gordon Banks from the challenge by Curran. And what a good throw by Banks, straight to Alan Ball. Lee wanting it fast down the right, and Lee's got it there too. Hurst is waiting in the middle, and Brogan covering well for Scotland. So England's corner, it'll be Ball to take it. Chivers has gone into the six-yard area. Hurst is there too. Peters and Lawler, who scored nearly 50 games of first-team football, was getting there as well. And Peters! Oh, was it there? Yes, it's given! Martin Peters gets that one! And England go ahead after nine and a half minutes. Clark is furious. Peters is delighted. But now Johnston, they look more and more now to this Louis man. John Gregg going up on the outside. Jimmy Johnston. And Ball putting it back there, Curran with a chance, and Curran has equalised! The back pass that wasn't a good one, and it came from Alan Ball, and Curran there in the mix-up with Banks, making it 1-1, two goals now in the first 11 minutes. Well, in fact, it was Jimmy Johnson here who tried that ball through, which brought about the trouble, and there was Ball's pass back. Now look as Banks comes and misses the ball. He went straight for Curran's feet, Curran didn't touch it, so it was an own goal. Rob, now Ball looking to get on that one, that fell nicely for Ball, what a nice little pass there for Lee. Can he belt this one? Still Lee going on, they're lining up for it, and Clark tipping that over! That was a fine piece of goalkeeping. And so now it's Davy Rob. Ball shaken off that ball by uh, Lee, and Brogan now putting it for Chivers to hammer it, and there it is! Martin Chivers! A mistake in that Scottish defence by two players, Rob in the first place and by Brogan in the second, and Chivers making no mistake with the chance that came his way. Well, in fact, it was Francis Lee here who won that, and he doesn't fancy that tackle and keeps out, but in the end, he gets the break, and Martin Chivers in that position, look where the shot's from, and look at the accuracy and power. That's why Chivers is in the class that he is. Oh, Chivers are going on this one, there was a deflection which wasn't very lucky, and there it is, Martin Chivers, another one! With Clark absolutely stranded the goalkeeper, and that's his fury, and that's again the English delight. It shows the pace of Martin Peters, you see how much he has to make up there, at, at Martin Chivers, there he is, look at him racing for it, goalkeeper slightly out of his goal, and it was just the space he wanted to get it there. Story. Played first time across the field where there were two England players waiting, and this Martin Peters who's got it, and Terry Cooper now over on the left. Across towards Hurst, flicked on, Chivers the hat trick! No, oh, disallowed! Offside, says the linesman on the far side. Well, we can look at it now and see what we think, whether that was offside. Certainly the near defender was at fault. You can see that Chivers is at least level when that ball was flicked there by Jeff Hurst. It would have been his hat-trick, but I think the linesman was absolutely right to disallow it. Moore. Chivers away for this one, but Moncur's gone with him. Now, has Chivers the strength and the skill to fight off Moncur? Well, at least he's got the skill to find Martin Peters. Peters trying to turn it through for Clark! Now can Clark turn that one in, down he goes, Peters to turn it across again. Ball, he cannot fail, but he has. How did he miss 
that one. He doesn't know, and Clark had a beautiful chance before it. Chivers again going for it, beaten by Monroe in the air. Clark now can turn it off for Peters to hammer it just wide. Oh, another fine English move, and Peters no more than three or four inches wide with a really glorious drive and a fine, subtle build-up.